This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. This is Rick Renner coming to you from the Renner Kitchen in Moscow, Russia. And this is our daughter-in-law, Paulina Renner. She's married to Paul. And Paulina, I'm so glad you're with me today. Thank you. It's so good to be here. Well, Paulina is going to show us how to make borscht, which is very loved in this part of the world. And the Renner family really loves borscht. But we're talking about what you need to have in your spiritual diet. But we decided that this week we were going to show you some things that you ought to learn to cook in your kitchen from Russia. And if you'd like to have the recipe for how to make borscht, you can go online and just download it from our website. But Paulina, show us how to make borscht. Okay, today we're going to share our family recipe, the way my kids like to eat borscht. There are many ways to make borscht, but I will show you how my family makes it. We make it with a lot of beets, onion, uh, cabbage, potato, carrots, bay leaves, allspice, tomato paste, some oil, you can uh, use vegetable oil or olive oil, meat, preferably with the bone, garlic, and some wine vinegar. I'm gonna start with making my bouillon, and you just have to boil your meat for hour, if it's with the bone, for hour and a half. My meat is boiling, and meanwhile, we're gonna shred some beets, and it will be a messy process, that's why I put some gloves on. My beets are ready and I'm gonna start the next process. We will fry the beets, but first we need some oil. And I'm gonna leave a little bit and I'm gonna show you later what I'm gonna do with it. On the medium heat, you don't want them to be like super fried or burned. It's gonna um, cook for maybe two or three minutes. And then we're gonna add tomato paste. Next step is tomato paste because it gives this sour taste to borscht and my kids really like, love it. And we will add some bouillon. You might need to add more bouillon into your beets. So just watch the process and don't let them dry because then they will start burning. My beets are cooking and the next step is to add white wine vinegar to my beets. It will help to um, for color to remain, this beautiful red color, it will remain. Some people use lemon juice but I prefer wine vinegar better. I'm gonna add some uh, water to my beets that were not cooked. It will give me extra red color at the very end. Um, so we will just leave it as it is and we're gonna start cutting onions. Also, there are many ways to cut your onions. Some people do cubes, some people do slices. Um, I, I just do the way we like it. My onions are ready and next step is to, we need to shred some carrots. They will go together in the frying pan so I'm not separating it. My onions and carrots are ready to go to the next step and we're gonna fry them in a different frying pan to a rich golden color. We don't need to burn them, so we have to be careful to watch them not to be burned. This is cooking. I'm gonna do the next step. I'm gonna cut some potatoes. And again, there is no strict rules how you wanna make it. Just do like your family likes. Okay, my potatoes are done. I'm gonna take the plate and put them aside. The next step is cabbage. I like some, some thin slices. So I'm gonna just cut it like that. Some people cut it in cubes. It's really up to you the way you like it. I cut my cabbage in thin pieces and we are getting ready to do the next step. My bouillon is ready. 
So now I need to put beets into the pan. And immediately it turns red and into a beautiful color. Next is potatoes and cabbage. Okay, cabbage and potatoes were cooking for 10 minutes. Now it's time to add my carrots and onions. Let's mix it together. And at this point, we will add some spices. We will add some bay leaves. I think three will be enough. Some allspice, maybe five or six. I put whole gloves of garlic salt and another optional ingredient will be sugar because it will balance the sour from vinegar and tomato paste and make it sweet and sour and we really like it about one teaspoon maybe a little more and let it cook for another 10 minutes before we turn the stuff off and it, it needs to sit for at least 30 minutes before you serve it. Borscht set for 30 minutes and now we are ready to eat. And it's gonna really be good. And Paulina makes good borscht, but there's one more special thing you can do. You can put sour cream in it. And when you put sour cream in borscht, then you stir it all around. Well, it kind of cools it down and it also adds a wonderful taste, doesn't it? Yes. But you can get this recipe by going online. And remember that this week we're teaching about what you need in your spiritual diet. But we also want you to learn something about this new Russian dish that you can make at home. Paulina, thank you. You're welcome. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner. Hey, how did you like the introduction to today's program where my daughter-in-law, Paulina, taught you how to make Russian borscht? Borscht is just so wonderful. And if you'd like to have the recipe so that you can make borscht yourself, just go to renner.org and download the recipe. You'll see there on our homepage a place where you can download Russian recipes this week. But we're really not teaching you how to make natural food. We're talking to you this week about what you need in your spiritual diet. And that's why I want you to get the series, which is called What You Need in Your Spiritual Diet. It's very practical and very simple, but I think very powerful. And it comes with a study guide. And we're also offering you this week our autobiography. We haven't offered this for a long, long time. It's called Unlikely, our faith-filled journey to the ends of the earth. And in this autobiography, we tell our story about how God called us, how he anointed us, how he sent us to the ends of the earth, why we are in Russia. That's where I'm speaking to you from right now. How we're today reaching our arms around the world with media, all the things that God has done. And in this autobiography, we don't just tell about all the victories. We tell about all the valleys we also had to walk through because that's a part of life. And faith helps us through every single phase of life. And let me tell you, it is unlikely that Denise and I and our family are doing what we're doing, that God loves to choose the unlikely. And that's why I want you to order your copy of unlikely. In the very middle of it, there's all kinds of photos that illustrates everything you're going to read in the book. But today, I want to talk to you about what you need in your spiritual diet. You know, when I was growing up, I ate a lot of fried food, a lot of fried food. So naturally, fried food is what I like. But fried food is not what is best for you. But then I married Denise, one of the greatest moments in my life. And Denise was raised in a home that ate a lot of healthy food. And when Denise and I got married, 
our taste buds didn't match. I wanted to eat junky fried food, and Denise wanted to feed me what I called rabbit food. It was very difficult for me to eat what Denise wanted to serve me, but it really is what was good for me. And I had to learn how to develop healthy habits of eating in my life. And there really are likewise things that you need to have in your spiritual diet that will make you stronger and will make you healthier. And today we're going to talk about number one, which is you need to spend time with God every day. In fact, it is the most important ingredient that you need in your spiritual life. And it's best that you spend time with God in the mornings. Now, you know that we're living in very challenging times. In fact, we might be living in the most challenging times that any believers have ever faced. But in a very difficult season in my own life in the past, I learned to develop certain disciplines in my life to make me stronger. And one of them was learning to spend time with God every single day, and not just every day, but in the mornings. And I learned that if I would incorporate this into my life, it would make me to become strong in the Lord. But I have to tell you, the only way you're going to do this is if you make a commitment to do it. But here's the amazing thing. God is always blessed when we bring him the first fruits of anything. And when you give God the first fruits of your day, God sees to it that he multiplies the rest of your day so that you're able to accomplish what you normally would not be able to accomplish. But what do I mean when I'm talking about spending time with God every single day. That's really the most important ingredient that you need in your spiritual diet. Well, in Psalm chapter five, verse three, David said, my voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. And notice David said over and over in the morning, in the morning, and then finally he said, in the morning will I look up. David knew he needed to look up the first thing he did every single morning, and so do you. David was surrounded with enemies inside his house, outside of his house. He had problems with his staff. He had problems with his kids. And we know by reading the book of Psalms, it's very clear that David was tempted to struggle emotionally. And he learned about himself that if he didn't begin the day by looking up, he would probably very quickly begin looking down. And it's just the truth. The things have a way of spinning out of control very, very quickly. And that's why it's so very important that before you even lift your head off the pillow or put your feet on the floor, you make a commitment. I'm going to look up. My friends, this is very, very important. You have to make a concrete decision. This is the first thing I'm going to do every single morning. David said, in the morning, in the morning, I will look up. Wow. Now, I'm going to tell you how I do this, but first I want to read you one more scripture. David said in Psalm 3, 3, but thou art Lord art a shield for me. Do you need a shield? He wants to be your shield, but wait. Then David said, you're my glory and you are the lifter of my head. If you're tempted to hang your head low, well, the Lord is the lifter of your head. And if you will make a commitment to look up first thing every morning, it will enable you to keep your head held up high. Now you might say, well, I'm just not a morning person. I used to say the same thing, but you can be a morning person and it will change your life if you become a morning person person. It may mean that you have to go to bed a little bit earlier so you can get up earlier. It may mean that you need to turn the television off. And by the way, what value is watching all that television until midnight every single night? What is it really adding to your life? It's just a consumer. It's filling your brain with information that you really don't need. It's filling your eyes with things that are not going to make any difference in your life. And you go to bed late, then you get up late. Why not turn the TV off earlier? Put your phone on pause, go to bed, talk to the Lord before you fall asleep, and then wake up early so that you can spend a little time with the Lord. And when I talk about spending a little time with the Lord, I'm not talking about hours. Begin with two minutes, begin with five minutes, but before you do anything else, consecrate the first part of your day to look up. Well, now here 
is what I do. When I wake up in the morning, I wake up pretty early before I ever lift my head off the pillow. I'm telling you this is the truth. Before I ever lift my head from the pillow, I'm first of all acknowledging the presence of the Lord in my life. I say, Lord, thank you for your presence. I thank you that you are the Lord of this day. What a great way to begin your day by recognizing that Jesus is Lord of the day and whatever happens in the day. And before I lift my head from my pillow, I pray for Denise, then I pray for our sons, I pray for their wives, I pray for our grandchildren, I pray for my siblings and their family, I pray for our partners, I have a list of partners that I pray for very specifically every day, I pray for you, I pray for everyone who watches our TV program, I do all of that before I ever lift my head off the pillow or put my feet on the ground. Now you say, well, wow, that must take a long time. Actually, it doesn't take long at all. It really takes me about a minute or two minutes to go through all of those things as I pray. It comes to my heart. It comes very quickly, but it's prayed with faith. It's very sincere, and it really means something. And you know, when you start your day in prayer, it really changes the way you feel about your day because you know you started your day right. It just puts you on a different foundation for your day. But after I pray for my family, then I go into the kitchen and I turn on the coffee pot. Well, it takes about two minutes or three minutes for a pot of coffee to be made. So during that two or three minutes, rather than just stand there and waste time, I do push-ups. Well, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. And the truth is, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And if you want your temple to be in good shape, then you have to do something to keep your temple in shape. And I made a decision years ago that I would begin every day by exercising, and I do it while I'm waiting for my coffee. Again, this doesn't take a lot of time. It's amazing. You can do so much in very little time, and it really makes a difference in your prayer life, your spiritual life, in your physical life. But once my coffee is ready, then I grab a pot of coffee, I grab my cup, and I walk to my room where I take my Bible, I sit down, and immediately begin to read the scriptures. And I have a self-imposed rule in my life. This is not a Bible rule, but it's a rule that I needed for me. Sometimes we need self-imposed rules. And my self-imposed rule is this, no Bible, no breakfast. I needed that rule. So if I don't read my Bible, then no food goes in my mouth. Well, when you know you're not going to eat, then you'll read your Bible. This was just a discipline that I personally needed. Maybe you needed too. Why don't you make the decision, no Bible means no breakfast. It will help you to pick up your Bible and to read. And I want to tell you that if you don't know where to start reading, then ask your church for a Bible reading plan or contact our ministry and we'll provide one for you. But get a plan to help you. It'll keep you on track. It's a type of personal accountability. And I want to tell you that I read the Word of God every single day of my life because it feeds me, it helps me, it keeps me on track, and it keeps my heart soft before the Lord. And this is also a requirement for all the members of my team. In fact, every day I ask my team members, did you read your Bible? Did you pray in tongues? And I also ask them, did you exercise? And guess what? They ask me the same questions. Did you read your Bible? Did you exercise? Did you pray in tongues? Every morning we hold each other to a level of accountability on these three things because it really is very essential for our spiritual diet. It is not an option. And I want to tell you that often when you are in the ministry, you make the mistake of thinking that preparation time to preach to others is your personal spiritual time. It is not. You need time with the Lord just for your own heart, not what you're preparing to serve someone else. And many good people in the ministry have fallen into the trap of thinking, well, if I spend time in preparation, that's the equivalent of feeding myself. But my friends, you need with time with the Lord just for you, praying, feeding on the Word of God, fellowshipping with the Lord just for you. 
Now, many people say, what should I read? Well, I'm going to give you some suggestions. If you need wisdom, then you should read the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is full of wisdom. If you need strength, then I would encourage you to read the book of Psalms because the book of Psalms is filled with strength. If you want a deeper revelation of Jesus and his life and his ministry, then read the four gospels. My friends, the scripture will take you deep into God. And before you read, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes. As you read, pray and ask the Holy Spirit, what does this mean? After you read, say, Holy Spirit, now show me how to incorporate what I've read into my personal life and don't rush. Take your time. Really read. Meditate on what you're reading. If you can, memorize it and then begin to speak it out of your mouth. And if you're on a Bible reading plan, which I would suggest, and you come to a particular chapter and you just feel it's a little difficult, then look for a different translation, which may be able to impart it to you in a new and a fresher way. And if you feel like you need to pause on a verse a little bit longer, that's all right. You pause, you get that verse into your heart until you get everything out of it that you really need. But you need to let the word of God fill your eyes. You need to let the word of God fill your mind. You need to let it touch your emotions. The Word of God has the power to change you. That's why I end every program by quoting Ecclesiastes 8, 4, where the word of a king is, there is power. God's Word has power to transform you. But my friend, I want to tell you, the most important ingredient you need in your spiritual diet is time with God. And you may not know how to do that, And that's why today I'm giving you these practical instructions about how you can spend time with God. It's very simple. It doesn't take long and it will totally revolutionize and transform your life. So today I'm encouraging you to make a commitment to make this the number one priority in your spiritual diet. And when we come back tomorrow, we're going to see the next element that you need to have in your spiritual diet. Learning to eat correctly can make all the difference in the quality of a person's life. Eat wrong and you'll be too skinny or too fat and unhealthy. Eat right and you'll be healthy and strong. The same is true spiritually. But do you know the essentials you need in your spiritual diet so you'll be in good spiritual condition and be able to run a long and productive race in your life? In this simple and practical five-part series, what you need in your spiritual diet, Rick covers five essential ingredients you need in order to be spiritually healthy and strong. Rick will show you how to spend time with God, be quiet and pray, do something for someone else, say no to some things, stir up the gift of God inside you. This series is available in digital or physical format starting at just $10. We're also offering Unlikely, Rick and Denise's life story of how God chose their unlikely family to be used in a spectacular way in a foreign land. Rick says God enjoys using those whom the world would never choose. If you feel unlikely to be used for God's purposes, I believe this book will thrill your heart and help you stay the course. This history-filled autobiography, Unlikely, can be yours for just $25. And be sure to go to renner.org to download the free recipes for the tasty dishes that are prepared on this program. Don't miss these special offers, this series, What You Need in Your Spiritual Diet, the book Unlikely, and free recipes. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and today I want to give you a report about what's happening in the construction of our new studio. Work still continues. It's taken a little bit longer than we anticipated because of all the sanctions that have stopped materials from coming to Russia, but we're doing it step by step. And today they're installing the fireplace, which is going to be the centerpiece of this big room where we're going to be filming programs. But hey, There's more than this. Let me show you. Well, I know you can't tell from what it looks like right now, but this really is gonna be one of the smaller studios. And this is gonna be Denise's studio because Denise is reaching women everywhere with her programming. And right from this spot, 
Denise is going to be sending her teaching to women all over the world. But hey, there's another set in addition to this one. This is our third studio in this new building. You may say, why do you need three studios? Because we're filming a lot of programs. Right now, we can only film one program at a time. We have to set it up, take it down, but this will enable us to do multiple things at one time. But on both floors of this building, there are multiple offices. In fact, there are 18 offices, and in all of these offices, people are going to be doing editing, writing, producing programs, working with our network. And it's not about buildings, it's about people. People need the teaching of the Word of God. But right now we're in phase three of our ministry, which is paying off our Tulsa ministry headquarters. We want to pay it off because the moment it's paid off, all of those funds will be released for us to broadcast the teaching of the Word of God around the world. And that's really our goal, to get the gospel and to teach people the Bible all over the world. They're just crying out for it and they're waiting for that signal to come with the answer that they've been seeking. So please help us as we finish phase three to pay off the Tulsa facility. It has been such a pleasure today to talk to you about what you need in your spiritual diet. And today we've talked about spending time with God. And my goal this week is to very practically help you understand how to implement certain things into your spiritual diet to make you strong. Just like physically, if you want to be in good shape, you have to eat the right kinds of food. Well, if you want to be strong spiritually, then you need to have certain ingredients in your spiritual diet. And that's why I want you to order the series, which is called What You Need in Your Spiritual Diet. This would be great for you, great for anyone that's just growing in their relationship with God, and it comes with a great study guide. So you can read all the points while you're seeing it or while you're hearing it. And this week, we're also offering you our autobiography, which is called Unlike. Look at that. The subtitle says, Our Faith-Filled Journey to the Ends of the Earth. And in this autobiography, we tell the unlikely story of how Denise and I and our family ended up on the other side of the world, right here where I'm coming to you from today. This is Moscow, Russia. It is so unlikely that we would be here and that from here today, we would be teaching the Bible to the ends of the earth. That God loves to do unlikely things with unlikely people. That might be you. And that's why I want you to read this story. It will really encourage you in your faith. And please, when you reach out to us, let us know how to pray for you. And by the way, go online to download the recipe about how you can make Russian borscht. But let me pray for you right now. Father, we thank you that you really want us to spend time with you and to look up. We don't have to look down. We can begin our day by looking up. And we thank you that by filling our hearts with the word of God, we will be strengthened and that we can overcome anything we face in any day. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, Ecclesiastes 8, 4, where the word of a king is, there's power. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.